Number one, solve for each indicative variable. So D equals M over V. And we're supposed to solve for M. Maybe we should go around. Does anybody want to volunteer to start? <laughs> Olivia wants to. Paxton? How do we solve this for uh, M? You, like, multiply V. Right. To get rid of the V, you multiply by V. What's happening is that just goes away, right? Mm -hmm. So we get M equals DB, DB, whatever. Yeah, B's go away. On this side, they go away. That's why we just got M. On this side, they still have the B. I <coughs> switched the order. <coughs> Number three. Oh, yeah, right. This one's kind of tricky. Uh, Linux, what do you think we should do for, oh, we're supposed to solve for R on this one. Linux, what do you think maybe we should do first to get R by itself clear? Exactly right. So since the whole right side is multiplied by C, you want to get rid of it first by dividing by C. And I definitely recommend the division bar. So that just goes away. Okay, now what, Linux? Minus H. Minus H, good job. Nailed it. All right, so we got S over C minus H. So notice H is not divided by C. To number what seven? Uh, okay, unit rate. Okay, not hard to do, but maybe hard to remember what to do. Uh, Sarah. So it says eleven oh, eleven hundred pages, or no words in four pages. Um, Sarah, do you know, think you know what they're asking when they ask for the unit rate? Well, if you can fit 1,100 words on four pages, the unit rate is how many words can you fit on one page? So yeah, we just divide by four. Let's see, what does that come out to? Okay, so it'd be 275 words per page. I don't know if that's a good abbreviation for words. Maybe I shouldn't abbreviate words. Yeah, they didn't abbreviate it. Okay. Uh, unit rate's just something that we use a lot because it helps us compare different things. All right, number nine. Oh, number eight says buying three top three tires at eighty and get getting the fourth for free. So really, how many tires did we buy for eighty dollars? Four. So you would want how much are we paying per tire? So eighty dollars for four tires is how it starts. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, eighty each. My bad. It's not eighty dollars for all three tires. It's eighty dollars for each tire, which makes more sense. Uh, so how much money did we spend? Three tires for eighty dollars each. Two forty. So it's two hundred and forty dollars, but really for four tires. Not very many people are going to want just three tires. So the, I mean, it's possible, but not likely. Number. Maybe if you had one of those three wheelers. Yeah, but that's probably not a three wheeler. Up there buying tires for. Number nine. Uh, 
Yeah, maybe you should have skipped this one, actually. Uh, I'll go ahead and do it. I don't remember doing one like this on my homework, but... Uh, it's kind of like starts with the unit rate. 88 feet in one second. And it wants us to change it to miles. Well, here, let me move this over. Um, so, how do I change seconds into uh, minutes and hours? One second, 60 seconds is equal to one Um, yeah, so to change a second into a minute, you have to do times 60. And to change, how many minutes are in an hour? Yeah. Um, if you remember to, when you're multiplying the bottom of a fraction, if you do something to the bottom, like multiply by 60, to keep it equal, we have to do it to the top. Times 3,600. You guys remember that one? No. Uh, 5,280. Okay. Yeah, I'm not doing very good at this. This bottom thing down here, like 3,600 seconds, yeah. is actually just one hour. That makes sense. Because we turned seconds into 60 of those made a minute, 60 of those made an hour. So, anyway. Um, well, yeah, we're supposed to change the seconds into hours, which we did. What did you guys get for the top so far? 316,800. Okay, it's still in feet though. So and we need to change that into uh, miles. So it takes 5,280 feet to make one mile. So 60 miles? So yeah, divide by 5,280. So 60 miles an hour. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think of an easier way to think of this. This is the answer, by the way. So he's going a mile a minute? Yeah. Uh, no, no, I don't think it is. So, I think I usually just uh, don't teach that, so. I'm trying to think of an easier way to do it. What if... Uh, let's just go on to number 11. These you guys definitely need to know how to do. Uh, Olivia, do you remember how we solved this for Y? fractions or ratios. 12 times y equals 25 times 20. Alright, this doesn't come out that nicely. Usually, I want you guys to leave a fraction. I think the book put both actually. Yeah, the book put both. If you divide it by 4, it's 125 thirds. Or if you change it to a decimal, about 41.6. So either of those answers is acceptable. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, so number 12 looks a little bit different. Does everybody, Carolyn, what, how do we set up number 12? Well, how would we set up number 12, sir? Why are you not on page 140? Gianna, how do you set up number 12? So nine times parentheses x minus one. And six times parentheses x plus one. Yes. So yeah, you have to multiply it times the whole thing, like distributive property. Number 13. Uh-oh. Okay. More tricky ones. If the ratio of hydrogen and oxygen in water is one to eight. Uh, do you guys know what that means? Ratio of masses. Mass is like weight. You guys might know that water is H2O, two hydrogen and one oxygen, but oxygen weighs a lot more than hydrogen does. So anyway, it's kind of besides the point. The weight of the hydrogen is one compared to eight is the weight of the oxygen. How many grams of each are in 90 grams of water? Well, um, again, this is kind of a mess to set up. Uh, so let's try it this way. If there's one gram of hydrogen for eight grams of water, then what fraction of water is hydrogen? Okay, it's one ninth. If there's one gram of hydrogen for eight grams of water, that means that in nine grams of water, one of them is hydrogen. Uh, eight ninths would be oxygen. So one ninth. Now I'm using this right here. For one gram. Of hydrogen, eight grams is oxygen. So that means one out of nine is hydrogen and eight out of nine is oxygen. Because together, one and eight make nine. That's basically what I'm doing. So one out of nine. So this is the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen. And this is the water all together. So one hydrogen, eight oxygen together make nine grams of water. So one ninth would be hydrogen and uh, eight ninths would be oxygen. Yeah, that's a big mess. All right. So uh, it's asking how many grams are of each. So one ninth of the 90 would be hydrogen and eight ninths of the 90 would be oxygen. This would be hydrogen, this would be oxygen, grams. Not a very good question, you know. You're not set up for that one. On 14, this is a little more straightforward. What is the distance between two towns that are 5.25 inches apart on a map with a scale of one inch is 40 miles? What does it mean that the scale is one inch 40 miles? One inch is equal to 40 miles. Right. One inch on the map is equal to 40 miles in real life. So, you can set this up as a proportion. One inch 
is to 40 miles as 5.25 inches is to how many miles? Okay, so you can solve that up just, you can solve that just like number 11, just cross multiply. Uh, 15, a popular manufacturer of die cast metal toy cars uses a 1 to 64 scale. What do you think that means he uses a 1 to 64 scale if he makes toy cars or they make toy cars? What do you think that's talking about? Uh, so like every one inch, there's 64 inches or feet yes. of car. Yes. So, yeah, she said for every inch, like on the toy car, there'd be 64 inches on the real car or feet, one, in, one foot on the, or whatever, centimeters. So, in other words, the real car is going to be 64 times longer than the toy car, or the real car is going to be 64 times taller than the real car. That's another way to think about it. Um, how many inches long is the model, that's the toy, uh, of a car that is 16 feet long? So, where should the 16 feet go? Uh, on the bottom. bottom. Because this is the toy, this is the real. So 16 feet should go across from the real. The thing. Uh, well, we're going to have to change it into inches. So, when we cross multiply on this one, we get 1 times 16 equals 64 times x. We're looking for how long x the little toy car is. So, how do I solve that for x? Sixteen divided by sixty-four is point two five or one fourth. Okay. Okay. If they had said how many feet is the toy car, it'd be a quarter of a foot. But I think they asked for inches, didn't they? Yes. Yes. So what is one fourth of a foot in inches? Okay. It's like, what's 25% of one foot? How many inches are in a foot? 12. 12. So it's like 0.25, 25% of 12 is, or one fourth of 12 is? Uh, three. Three. So instead of pointing, putting 0.25 feet, we should put three inches. You may think of another way I could have done this problem probably not. I could have right at the beginning turned 16 feet into inches 16 feet times 12 inches and that would have done it also all right 16 the dimensions of a rectangular room are as uh, are drawn at 7.5 x Okay, do you guys know what that stuff means? Okay, let's start with this thing. What does that mean? Inches. Inches. Okay, do you know what this means? Well, by. 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 So, when uh, people are describing rectangular things, you guys have heard of a two by four? Yeah. That's a plank of wood that is two inches by four inches on the end of the wood. So, it doesn't tell you how long the plank is. So, or this room in here might be, I don't know, like 25 feet by 15 feet or something like that. That describes rectangles. But little x, we read it as by. If you want to find the area of a room, you actually would multiply it together. Maybe that's why they put an x there. I don't know. Anyway, so they're saying the little picture of the room is 7.5 inches by 6 inches just on the drawing. And the scale is 1 to 24. What do you think that means? 
For every one inch of the room, there's 24 inches in the real thing. Um, but do you think we're probably going to measure a room in inches? No. no. So they're probably going to want the answer in feet. Uh, determine the number of square feet of carpet needed for this room. So, um, yeah. So the real room, I'm not going to draw a giant rectangle, but um, how would I find out how many inches are on the real room? Multiply by 24. 7.5 times 24. What is that? And six times twenty-four. Okay. To find the area of a rectangle, we do what? Okay. But here's the problem. We probably want to go ahead and change these into feet right now. A square foot is not equal to seven to twelve square inches. A square foot, which looks about like that is actually 12 times 12, 144 square inches. So anyway, I know that's complicated, but you guys haven't done geometry yet. This is how many, how many feet are in 180 inches? Or how would we figure, turn that into feet? Right. Each 12 inches is worth one foot. So you divide by 12. So yeah, that's 15 feet. Put one of those things, that means a foot. What's 144 divided by 12? So the real room is 15 feet by 12 feet. How do I find the area now? 15 times 12. Okay, and to label a square foot is different than an actual foot. An actual foot looks like this like a line. A square foot looks like, well I drew one here, looks like a giant square that's one foot on each side. That's how we measure how big houses are. Maybe you guys have a house that's like 2,500 square feet or something. That's describing the size of the floor. Anyway, uh, you put a little square up there to, a little two up there to represent that it's a two-dimensional foot. One of these instead of one of these. Kind of getting in geometry a little bit. All right. I know those are hard. That's why we did them together, because... Um, there will probably be a couple word problems, but it probably won't be those. Uh, there will be, like, 14 would probably be on the test, something like that. We'll talk more about it. Number nine, no. I usually skip those, actually. Um, okay, number 17. All right, maybe I should skip this one too, but we'll keep going. You can just, they're not, they're not hard. It's just, I don't know what. No, we just didn't do geometry stuff this chapter. No, 16. Number 17 says solve a proportion to find. So when you have similar shapes, uh, their sides are proportional. So do you guys see those two triangles on the right? Oh, yeah. And you see how that, uh, the right side of the triangles, the bigger one's 25, the little, little, littler one is 20. So the ratio of those two sides, 25 to 20, is going to equal the ratio of any other two matching sides. So 25 goes with the big triangle, like 20 goes with the little triangle. So what's a ratio that I could set up to help me find X here? What side does X match on the big triangle? 17, right? 17 centimeters. So if 25 is on the big triangle, like 20 is on the little triangle, 17 is on the big triangle, matches X on the little triangle. Okay, and then you can cross multiply if you're out with the X's. Hmm? Not for 
or 17 now. Let's just get 18 and 19 going to 20. Yeah. Okay. How did we change a decimal or a percent into a decimal? How did we change a percent into a decimal? Emily? Yeah, which way did we move the decimal? No. Okay, if you get confused, here's probably a, a better way to do it. Like, just think of a simple, like, 25%. What was 25% as a decimal? Yeah, it's 0.25, right? That's why I'm doing number 20, because I knew you guys probably get it wrong. A lot of you. 25% is actually 0.25. Right, remember? So the decimal moves the left twice. 25%, remember, means 25 out of 100. The decimal 0.25 is 25 hundredths. 25 out of 100. You have to move the decimal left, that's the point. So what would 0.5% become? Left. What? 0.005. Um, what is 0.5%? What is that as a fraction? Okay, do you guys know what place the 5 is in? Thousandths. thousandths. So this is equal to 5 thousandths. But if it reduces, some of you got this wrong on the homework. If it reduces, you have to reduce it. So you can plug that in your calculator's fraction it equals or just divide both of those by five. after that. This one you guys might know by heart. What's 0.5 as a percent? Right, so we're going the opposite direction this time, so it's 50%. And what's 50% as a fraction? Uh, one half. One half. 50 over 100 reduces to 1 over 2. Uh, okay. 23, uh, on 22, how did we change the fraction into a decimal? Uh, one fifth into a decimal? Divide. 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 One divided by five. Okay, 23. Okay, you guys remember doing these? It says 36% of what number is 54? What did we write for 36%? 0.36. 0 0.36. We changed it to a decimal. Because 36% is not worth 36. Uh, of, what did we put for of? What number, what did we put for what number? Is, what did we put for is? Equals. And then it says 54. Okay, that's all we did on those. And then we solved it, of course. Uh, How do I solve this one for n? What do we get? And you might 
check and make sure your answer makes sense. Is it possible that 36% of 150 is only 54? Yes. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Uh, for 24, no, I'm not going to do it, but it says what percent. So your variable, what percent is your variable? But you have to remember to change your answer, it'll probably be a decimal, into a percent. Some of you forgot to do that in the homework also. So if you get like 0.37 or whatever, it's 37%. It's going to be a lot bigger than that, by the way. But. Okay, 25. Complete the table. All right, so it says we're starting with 900. And the change is it's going, it's adding 36, it's going up 36. Okay, this is important. What is the formula that we use to find percent change? Original or change over the original? Change divided by original. I'm pretty sure that was the only formula we had this chapter. Except for the rate Well, that's not technically a formula, that's an equation. Uh, but yeah, it's similar. Some, some we have to remember distance equals rate times time. Uh, let's see. So yeah, this, this is a percent change formula. So if they ever ask what percent is it increasing, what percent is it decreasing? Percent change. Okay. Um, you do the change divided by the original and turn that into a percent. Okay, I don't know if we've seen a problem written exactly like this. What is the change on this problem? It said starting at 900 and it's going to go up 36. 36, okay. Usually we, the problem looked more like this. It's going from 900 to 936. And we had to find the change ourselves, right? We just subtracted. But on this one, they're just telling us the change is up 36. Okay, so 36 is the change. What's the original? 900. So what is 36 divided by 900? Say again. Uh, yeah, so it says round the answers to the nearest 10. But we're not going to have to round this. 0 0.04 is what percent? 4%. It was a decimal twice. Maybe I should have written 4% increase just to be a little more accurate. Okay. Then they say, what's the new amount? What do you guys think they mean by that? The addition of the number plus change. Yeah. The original plus 36 will give us the new amount. So 936 is the new amount. So we didn't do the table thing, we just did the word problem thing with this assignment. So that's why it looks different. Uh, let's see. So on 26, it says the original is 150 and it says the new amount is 100. So what must the change have been to go? Uh, yeah. Specifically down 50, right? Or, 50, or maybe my, put minus 50 for the change, maybe. And then the percent change is still the change. Just put 50, don't put minus. The change divided by the original. Uh, we'll just finish this one. This assignment is, uh, we'll work on it some tomorrow as well. So I don't think we'd get through it today. Probably should give me more time on the evens. But since we're in this box, I want to finish it. Subtract 35 as a change. That's a 20% decrease. Okay, on this problem, 
minimum, it says it's the original number, which we don't know, and the last number we don't know. It says um, this number is supposed to decrease by 20% to get this number. And also, it's decreasing by 35. So basically what they're telling us is that 35 is a 20% decrease on this number. In other words, 20% of this number is 35. So 20% of the number gives us that 35. So how do I find out the original number? Divide. This is why we didn't do the tables, because they are kind of a mess. Well, okay, what do we get? 175. Okay, so if the original was 175 and it's supposed to decrease by 35, what's the new amount going to be? Yeah, just subtract. So yeah, those are the two, the two missing ones. We got four minutes. I want you to do, try to do two or three problems. How would you say it's number twenty-six? No, I said we're working on it tomorrow. Twenty-six. We already talked about twenty-six. Oh yeah. Oh, number ten. This one's easier than the ten is easier than nine. Yeah, do you guys know how many meters are in a kilometer? Yeah. You know how many seconds are in an hour? Right, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. We kind of talked about this last time. So it's each hour holds 60 minutes. Each minute holds 60 seconds. So, yeah. And then you could reduce that. I think they're both divisible by 400. What's it reduced to? 250 over 9. Well, maybe they turned it to a unit rate. Did they? Yeah, they did. So they just did 100,000 divided by 3,600. They did a unit decimal. rate. Yeah, decimal. Don't you? 27.7 meters per second.